Welcome, Modern Talkers. This is Modern Talk once again. I'm, I get paranoid that I don't hit record for some reason, and then I come around, and then I'm like, oh, it is recording. Why do I have that paranoia? But I kind of like that I have that paranoia, because now I definitely am not just talking to myself in three lights. So that's really great. Uh, <laughs> it's terrible. That would be terrible. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of glad that I have that fear. I'm wearing the new Travis Gambino, well, the new Donald Glover uh, shoes that he made with New Balance. I'm not gonna like try to twist my leg to get to show you. I'll just put it right here or something. Um, and uh, it's really great. And I, <laughs> um, it's the morning. And I don't know if you could tell, I look a little morning. <laughs> and uh, when I put on these shoes for the first time, I put on um, 3, 15, 20, which is the Childish Gambino most recent album. And I only listened to that twice so far. Uh, and it came out two years ago now. Over two years ago now, geez. Um, I listened to it twice when it first came out, and then I didn't want to listen to it because I wanted to save it. And then, um, I didn't particularly know what I was saving it for. But, um, I think I found out because I thought it made sense to play it while I put on his shoes <clears throat> and it was awesome it felt like the right vibes and stuff it almost like wasn't distracting um, cuz I thought about putting on a different Childish Gambino song and I was like no nah, like I, I do feel that song to for my ear but for this experience it doesn't work um, so it's almost like perfect background noise, um, but it was more than that. I don't want to like uh, downplay it uh, as far as musicality. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so yeah, also that the first song is uh, him saying two words the whole time, I think, and um, and so that's why. It kind of helps that it makes sense for background music. And then I was like, well, like, I could just keep listening to it because I might as well. And in the car, um, the song Time came on and uh, it really hit me hard. And uh, I cried three or four times <laughs> and I don't want to be that guy that's like, oh, that's that crying guy. So hopefully I got it out um, now, uh, before this, because I'm not going to cry every episode. That's horrible. Um, but uh, I'll put some of the lyrics on here that, that um, you know, that, that hit me hard and you, you guys could see if that hits you hard as well. I, I don't even know if I want to do that because... It's, I don't want to, I don't want to force you to have my experience. I want you to experience it yourself. Um, but I don't think many people will go listen to it. Um, and it'd be perfect. You already listened to it and you have your own thoughts about it. And then I show you and then it's like, wow, for me, that's like crazy. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how I feel in the edit. Um, but I have a, a update about my ex-girlfriend. Um, so I think the last time we talked was uh, we were supposed to meet up to, yeah, the next, or no, two days from then, we were, we were supposed to meet up to exchange stuff. And it's another one where I don't know like how much is boring um, since it's fresh and uh, and you just don't know because you 
like I think everything is interesting like I need the nuance I, I we talked about this but um, but for like the vast majority of people I'm afraid that people are like okay let's let's hit the let's hit the big points and let's move on so I'll try to find some happy medium in there um, so long story short I cried <laughs> which, which I should have seen coming considering I cried in front of you guys but I thought that was like a, a special experience but clearly there's stuff that I didn't uh, process or stuff I just had to like work through um, and I don't know I because I thought I was like fine and then I but I think it's because I just didn't think about it too much which probably is bad because then it just sits there and then it's like once you poke it it's like zhaboom and just explodes in you so the story goes um, I get there and we talk and it's nice and um, well first first we hug and then you know I feel a little tingly in my nose I'm like wait what's that what are you doing here and then <clears throat> we talk a little, little bit and she mostly talks and then she's like well what about you what's going on um, like what's going on in your life not like what's going on uh, tone is important um, but yeah she was like la 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 this is what's happening it's crazy and then she's like what what's going on with you and then I said um, you know not much like I've I figured this question would come up and I tried to think of what I would say but I didn't know what to say so now I'm saying this <laughs> um, but uh, uh, like I not much has changed other than you're not in my life like the day-to-day -day thing like I just do more of what I did before um, and that's like pretty much all I said and um, when when I started talking, I felt the tinglys in my eyes, and I'm like, "Oh, Jesus is gonna be a problem." So, we were winding down the talk, and then she's like, "Oh, I gotta tell you this." And then a customer walks up and says, "Hey, uh, do you have any more of these anklets?" And telling it later to my friend, I realized, "Oh, geez, that's somehow a reference to my movie." in real life because in in my movie and in my real life um, I gave a girl an anklet uh, and that was our breakup how crazy is this man <laughs> I gave this girl I, I got I got her an anklet because she wanted an anklet secretly she was like oh I haven't had an anklet in a while like oh that'd be fun haha <laughs> and then we didn't talk about it again and I was like anklet found the hint uh, I don't even know if she, I don't think she knew she was hinting because she was pretty surprised. Anyway, not important. Uh, <laughs> so I gave her this anklet. Um, I brought it, I brought the anklet to the breakup because I was like, it's either going to be, because I didn't know if it was a breakup or not, but it felt like it could be. And I was like, this would be funny to give to her if we're broken up. And then it'll be a nice like, oh, let's, you know, give this another try uh, if it was not a breakup. So um, so I brought it with me and then I gave it to her after we broke up uh, because we ended up breaking up. And, um, and so when this happened, I didn't think about that at all. And then... Like I said, when I was telling actually Jake Muskie, if you if you're a you know true fan of the podcast, you know you know him, and uh, so I just thought that was crazy that the anklet was like the thing to take her away. Um, wow, yeah, that's so poetic, man. <laughs> uh, so she went away for like a minute to like show this lady anklets. 
And during that time, I don't know what happened to me, <laughs> but I was like, um, right before that, when it was winding down, I could feel it. And, um, I could feel that it was winding down. And for some reason that like sped up the cry part. So, <laughs> so I was like really on the precipice and I was like looking around and moving around to, um, <laughs> to, to not, to like distract myself. And like, I feel like I just looked like, um, someone with Parkinson's, which is really mean, but that's like literally, I was like really trying to distract myself. And that's, I was like, oh my gosh, I look like that. And she, I don't know if she, she must have noticed, but, um, and especially later when she saw me cry, she must have put the dots together or whatever, but, um, <laughs> but uh, uh, at the time it didn't look like she noticed, but I think I was also trying to distract myself, so who knows. Um, so, so then she walked away, and then like when she walked away for some reason it just like zoom like just came out of me like it did that explosion thing that I was saying like it got poked too much and then when I was alone with my thoughts I don't know it just got like and that's a great sound effect by the way that was perfect uh, <laughs> so I it's a creaky floor she works in a, um she works. She has five jobs, but um, she one of her jobs is she works at a um, like a hippie store, and so um, it's like wood, old wood floors, because um, that's for some reason like the cool hippie thing to do or whatever. And um, uh, I could hear her walking up, and I was I was face away because I was crying, and um, and I'm thinking. What do I do? Do I say, do I acknowledge it, or do I like wipe the tears real quick and be like, "Hey, what's up? Like, what? How was that? You know?" And eventually, I'm just like, "Dude, you gotta own it." So I, I just turned around and I said, "I'm crying," <laughs> and like covered my face and um, laughed. I did it like that, probably. Um, I was laughing because I realized it was so absurd. And uh, she was really sweet about it. She was like, oh no, why are you crying? Don't cry. <laughs> and um, I couldn't stop crying. And it was really embarrassing, obviously. And I was like, I don't know why, I'm so sorry, I don't know why. And I was like, I know I'm not doing this on purpose. I promise I'm not doing this on purpose to like get attention or, or something. She's like, no, I know. And I was like crying and then like there was silence. And then I was like, there's got to be something to say here that could save this. <laughs> I was like, what the heck do I say? I'm a writer. I should know something to say. And um, I was just like, I'm just completely drawn a blank. I, I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> and then... Uh, after a couple seconds of um, like diagnosing what was going on inside of me, um, I realized that um, it wasn't sadness at the time, I don't think. Like, I was pretty sad, you know, all through that, uh, all before that time. And then once I got there, I was like, oh, this is nice. Um, like I'm back in her presence and that's, you know, I'm familiar and um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and also, yeah, so I, I said, <laughs> I said, I'm not sad. It's just a lot of emotion. And I stand by that and I'm proud that I figured that out in the moment. It wasn't immediate, but uh, I eventually was like, Oh, it's not sadness. It's like I don't feel sad, because uh, nothing was wrong. I was with her, and it was nice. Um, 
but obviously it was like deep seated issues that were getting poked that I didn't know that I had. Uh, I was hoping that I bypassed that somehow, but you never do. You you have to deal with it. Uh, and so what what happened was I I used to always get her coffee before I visited her at work. And so I did that again because she said she was running late and she ended up not even bringing my stuff. So we have to meet up again, which is I'm sure will be another podcast. So I guess I should thank her for that, for not remembering my stuff so that I could get another podcast out of it. <laughs> but um, I'm eventually not going to do a you know, sad breakup podcast every time, but uh, this is just what's happening in my life, and I would be like hiding something from you if I was not talking about this. I mean, it's like the majority of my brain time is something about relationships in general if if not the most recent one um I've always kind of been like that man I don't know why um need to go to therapy so deep your issues deep seated getting poked but gunk so I got her the coffee and um <laughs> I actually I was paranoid because she has allergies. Oh, I told you about the allergy stuff. Yeah, so I, I did an online order and I did it. I do it there. I did it there all the time, and um, it wasn't. It was like never a problem, and and I I did it and it, it looked like darker than usual, and I don't like I I hadn't got it in two months or something, so I I wasn't you know completely sure. And I was like, you know, I trust them. It's all good. And then uh, I I was like, what are the chances? Like, this is the one one time they screw up. And then, then it would be like, you know, that would be really rough. Uh, like, that would make it really hard to get back together. <laughs> um, if that's even, you know, a possibility still. And, um, and so I... I hemmed and hawed and it was the most packed I've ever seen it because I never seen that that particular Starbucks during like the peak seasons. The season. There's not there's only one peak season. There if it was two peaks it'd be twin peaks. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> so I I literally I'm like, eh there's so many people I don't wanna disrupt and then it'll slow everyone down. I was like, well, because there's so many people, they're probably rushing and didn't maybe didn't look at the order as hard as they could have and made a mistake and then killed her through me. And um, so I literally I walked out the door and I was like, no, I I just got to at least ask. So I you know, it's really uncomfortable They're They're moving 100 miles an hour. And then everyone's like looking at them like. Is my order ready? Is that one mine? They're just like laser pointers looking at the place where they set new ones. Um, and so I think they, rightfully so, like block out people staring at them or seemingly trying to get their attention because it's like, I'll get to it when I get to it. Just be patient. That's obviously the answer. And um, so... So I was like, oh, excuse, I'm sorry, so sorry. Um, I just wanted to confirm that this is soy milk because it's, you know, my girlfriend is really allergic. And I was like, oh my gosh, I said my girlfriend out of, out of habit. Like, that's probably not good, right? Um, and the lady was like, I don't know. You know, I made that four minutes ago and I made six drinks since then. <laughs> um, so... And she looked at it, she's like, you know, I don't know, I'll just make another one. So, um, she made another one, and it looked different, so I don't know if it, you know, if it really was different. Um, <clears throat> either way, there was, like, a different amount of soy milk, or some sort of creamer. And, uh, and so, me walking in with, um, a... Uh, coffee, which I always did, and then since it's a hippie store, they sell incense, obviously, and that is a very particular smell, as people who, who 
have been around incense knows. Um, and I've smelled that smell a thousand, not a thousand, a lot of times. And it's so obviously closely tied to her because she works there and she likes incense and stuff. So, um, then I saw all the stuff that I've seen a bunch of times and like different variations of what I've already seen because I haven't been there in two months, so they had new stuff. Um, and it was just like seeing her, looking her in the eyes and hearing her, it was just like all the senses were getting bombarded with stuff that I hadn't felt uh, in a long time and I felt so intensely at that time. And um, I feel like if I didn't cry already in the car because of time, uh, the, the song time, um, I would have cried there, but I didn't, so. Yes. Anyway, so, <laughs> I said, it's, I'm not sad, it's just all this emotion of this and that and all the things that I said. Uh, and I think she understood. Uh, and she, she seemed to get a little teary-eyed, but not cry, like the eye-watering thing. Um, and I think it was just because I was crying. It wasn't because she needed to cry, if that makes sense. Um, and so at the end, I was like, let me know if you need anything. She's She was moving like two days after that or something crazy. So, uh, you know, people need stuff when they move, um, especially big, hunky, strong men. And, um, not to be sexist, but, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Tully <totally> was, uh, <laughs> but anyway, I told her, you know, let me know if you need anything, I'm always here for you, and let me know if anything changes with your mentality on stuff, like, if you realize you definitely don't want to get back together, let me know, because, you know, that'll just make me feel under like I, I feel like we don't be on the same page at least because um, every day you know I didn't say this part but every day farther away it feels like oh it's not gonna happen um, and and so uh, she's like yeah I, I'm just in work mode all the time and I think she was implying that she doesn't think about it at all, <laughs> um, and is happy working and doesn't have time to think about it, even if she wanted to, which I don't know that she does. Boy, I need a drink. <laughs> That's not vodka. Ah, stupid water. Um, so hot in here. Of course, of course. Uh, she yeah, she said she's in work mode and um, I was like yeah I understand um, and then I was just like God bless <laughs> and that's how we left it and then she she texted me um, and kind of explained herself more and that was nice uh, that she explained it she said I want you to be happy and do what you want to do uh, if you find someone, um, slash need someone, which I don't know what that means, like, I would need someone? Like, that's condescending? I don't know. Uh, I don't think she meant it that way, but I think that's, that's definitely how it could come across. Um, to be there with you now, I understand, and won't hate you or be upset with you. I don't know if this is too in the weeds, but... Uh, she took down um, my post from Instagram and um, there's a fighter plane trying to get me uh, I don't know if you could hear that um, but I still look at the camera more I, I keep looking down and away and stuff or just right here because I just did that so I can't think unless I look around for some reason <laughs> I don't know what that is but I'm gonna try to practice doing that um, but really, I have nothing in my brain right now other than I'm looking at a camera. So, 
Um, <laughs> oh yeah, so she she took down stuff of me on her Instagram, and so I just took my stuff down, and um, and then I looked at her thing again and realized she only took one of mine down and left another one up that was like solely about me so I didn't and I was like well I already took my stuff down so what is what do I do about that um and so I don't know if she saw that and and that's why she thinks I've I found someone else which I haven't even talked to anyone else or even attempted to talk to anyone else um but, uh, so I think maybe that's why she said that. That's the only reason why I would think that. Uh, and I don't think that I want her to think that. Because I want her to... But it's like a stupid game. Like, I hate the game stuff. Like, I wish I could just be, like, totally honest. And it's like, that, you know, adds up or whatever. Not that that adds, not, not that that adds up, but it, um, that's exactly what I wanted to hear and needed to hear. Um, cause I want to say, no, I don't, I'm not interested in anyone else right now. I think it's good to be single right now. And, um, also if you want to get back together, I'd definitely be open to talk about that. And then she goes on to say, I don't want you to be stuck on me because I have no idea what I'm doing in my life right now. I'm just working the summer away, honestly. Which is seems to be a reference to what she said. I'm just in work mode. Um, which is... Uh, okay, I remember that. Um, and I do still have love in my heart for you. And I do care about you so much. With like five, six zeros. Zeros. Six O's. So much. If you move on, I won't be upset. I'll be happy for you. I'm sorry I wasn't ready. So that's the move on thing again. So I don't know why she thinks I am already, but do I want her to think that I am already? That's kind of what I was saying before, um, is that I don't really, like I want to move on, but I don't want to, like I'm not looking to date anyone else. Um, I'm not close to dating anyone else, but right now I think I should not be dating any anyone including her um, and then she says I'm sorry I wasn't ready which is what the story I told you in the last podcast is the main thing was oh I'm, I wasn't ready and I need to heal from the last relationship uh, I wasn't ready to get in the relationship from the start but we did it for 10 months and it still doesn't make me ready uh, which is a big bummer um, and, uh, what did I say? Is this any of this interesting? So how I played it, which I hate, was, uh, I appreciate you giving me the freedom to do that, meaning date other people or whatever, but I think it's good for me to be single now, too. Plus, I told you three months. I don't know if we talked about this already, but I, I told her I'd give her three months, um, of being single for her to figure out her stuff out before... I'm, I move on, um, but from what she's, she's saying, it's not gonna, it's gonna be more than three months, if at all, so, um, so I said, like, I'm a man of my word, and I'll give you at least that, uh, and then I say, this is me kind of pu pushing back a little bit. I basically, I don't want to read everything that we said because that's boring. I kind of said, you're working so much, it seems like there's not really a possibility of us getting back together within six, you know, six months, uh, and probably more than that. And, um, and I, I'm like, I was like, I know you said that already, but it doesn't even seem like we're on the right track to eventually you know, like we could be, we could be, um, like if this is getting back together and this is <laughs> real good graph, um, 
it seems like you're supposed to be doing this, like a subtle grade to getting back together, but she's kind of just going straight across, you know, maybe little wiggles, but, um, you know, it doesn't look like she's trying to get better because she's just working and getting that guala, which, you know, can't knock it, but doesn't, that doesn't mean that we're going to get back together. Look, if we do, we'll be rich because she's working so much, and that's great. But, um, and there goes the dumpster. <sighs> that's going to be annoying. It's so loud. You have to hear that. You have to be able to hear that. Um, and, and so basically I said, yeah, it doesn't look like we're on the right track. And um, I said, like, you have work to do like you said and I obviously have work to do that I didn't even know like you know I knew I had work to do I didn't know how <laughs> intense it <laughs> has to be uh, and she she said just because I'm working a lot doesn't mean I'm not working myself the main reason for a breakup was not because I need to work on myself which is what she told me and what I told myself and she said that was part of it, yes, but I don't feel like it was all on me. And I could tell by the way she texted that, uh, that she was hurt and annoyed by me basically saying, oh, it's, it's not, you know, it's nothing I did, but whenever you figure it out, like, cool. It's kind of like my joke, like, glad, I'm, glad to know I'm perfect. Let me know when you figure your stuff out, though. Um, which I guess that seeped into my life a little too much because um, that's not what I I didn't mean for it to be like oh it's all your fault obviously it takes two people to break up a relationship um, like I, obviously if she was the happiest that she's ever been she's not going to break up with me you know and she was happy with me as far as she told me, but um, there's just, I guess there's something missing or whatever. Um, so she said the biggest reason for me was the food allergy problems kept repeating. And I was so dumbfounded by that because she just said in the text before that, I'm sorry I wasn't ready, which is confirmed what what I've been thinking is that she wasn't ready <laughs> and and so I say in the next text like I um, I'm sorry if it sounded sounded like I was saying it wasn't my fault at all I take responsibility for not being the best at and most cautious and serious about your allergies her saying what the what her reason for the biggest reason for the breakup was was a confirmation and reminder that the story, the past is just a story you tell yourself. Like, she said both those things during the breakup. And like I said, we barely even talked about the allergy part. I guess that was implied, you know, because of it, like that was, the catalyst or the beginning point or whatever you want to call it and I don't know I yeah we, we talked about that like maybe 5% of the three hours that we talked and um, certainly less than 10% but uh, so and it was more convenient that that it was that she she wasn't ready because that's not kind of her fault either and it's certainly not my fault <laughs> um, so I, I like that story that it was kind of neither of our faults and it was just kind of unfortunate but then when she said it was basically I mean she didn't say it was all my fault but she's the one who broke up with me and so that would seem like it's my fault 
because I did something wrong. Um, so she said the allergy stuff. And, and so that blew my mind. And, uh, and then she also goes on to say, um, don't focus on, so hard on us getting back together in a few months. If we both feel like we want to get together, we will. But right now we need to worry, not worry about the unknown and just focus on the present. And I was like, thank you so much for saying that because I needed that reminder. Um, like, duh. Uh, and then I felt really bad about that. And then uh, I went home for uh, to Pittsburgh. So something happened and I had this like mini breakthrough. And it was something along the lines of, we're not going to get back together and it's okay. And I had like a more fun way to say it and think about it, but that's the essence of what it was. And then after that, I felt better. And I also was seeing like my friends every day. Um, so that helped a lot. Um, my friends and family uh, from home that I never get to see. So that for sure helped. But now I'm, I'm this is my first full day back. And um, I still feel better, but I've also just got these new shoes and stuff, and so that's that's kind of been a good distraction. But our distraction's good because um, I think we learned that I need to, you know, deal with some stuff. But I definitely want to get a therapist. Like I joke about that and stuff, but like I really think I should get one, a real one, soon. Like I should look into it today. But expensive. But. What are you gonna do, I guess? Like, I don't wanna live like this forever. Um, or even worse, like, do the thing where I just brush it off and then, you know, in two years, I can't get another another relationship because I'm hung up on this, so. Uh, which has happened, what happened with my last one? I, or not my last one, um, the first one. Uh, Cause I was like, well, I don't wanna I don't know, that was a really interesting time, but <laughs> I, I like intentionally didn't necessarily, like I moved on, but I didn't want to like forget and stuff. And that's, you have to do that in order to move on and forget about someone, obviously to forget about something, but to, to, to to really actually move on from someone, I think you have to forget stuff because there was a reason why you were with them for so long and there was a lot of good times. So if you want to think about that all the time to keep their, you know, memory alive in you, then that's what you do. But, um, but I was like, we had a good relationship, so I don't really want to forget about it. And it was a great time in my life. And um, and finally, finally, after like two years, I was like, she's just some person living. She was married. It still is. But she was married and living in Illinois with some guy. I was like, why am I thinking about some lady, married lady in Illinois? Like, that sounds so ridiculous. So, that was my big breakthrough for, breakthrough for frat. Um, so, such a little kid thing to say. Such a, that was a big breakthrough. <laughs> Dude, I can't. <laughs> I've reverted back to my kid self. And something that I think, I don't know if it helped me or if it was right after, like, I've had that breakthrough that we're just not getting back together. Um... Uh, I, I had this like vision thing. It was like right before I fell asleep. Um, so I, I wanted to uh, write it down so that I had it to re reference later. And so what I, what I felt and thought was, your life is like a, like a blue square, blue rounded square. Um, which makes it not a square, I guess, but, um, <laughs> uh, that's just how, like, my mind chose to think about it, and, um, and then you have, it's filled with your life, your, your interests and hobbies and thoughts and feelings about stuff, and then 
Like, you're pretty full before you get a girlfriend, and then you get a girlfriend and or a boyfriend, and it ex- it like it's a explosion, and um, uh, you know, there's a significant other shaped her. She's in there. She's in your life. Like that's her body. You know, not her body. That's just how like you represent her. Um, but she's in there, and um, you know the explosion of love <laughs> uh, like spreads out to all all of the the parts of your life. After the explosion of love, you're happy to accommodate, um, like move things out of the way, sacrifice some things even, uh, but you don't care because you'd much rather have uh, love than uh, 14 hours of video games or whatever. And, um, and so, you know, they're so great that their essence trickles into all areas of your life. So like the, you know, your home, hometown or something, now there's sprinkles of, you, you showed them around there so that, you know, there's sprinkles of them there. And, um, and then, uh, you're excited about that and you love that and that makes your that part of your life even more bright because there's those little pretty sprinkly sprinkles. Then poof, there's a significant other shaped hole in your rounded blue square. And all those sparkles, sp- sprinkling sparkles, whatever I said, sparkling sprinkles <laughs> um, in your life turn to like black dots and sadness. And uh, so now your life is deformed because there's a hole in it and it's covered in sadness uh, and darkness and how do you rebuild what once was is that even possible and maybe not but I think the answer is little by little like find cool LED lights to put in your square um, you know Bluetooth with different colors you could do (laughs) <laughs> like that's obviously a metaphor um, uh, and install them in different areas of your life one by one and uh, fill that hole with friends family and hobbies that excite you uh, the hardest part about uh, breakups will be scrubbing scrubbing out former former sparkles um, but that's healing so uh, that's what I think about relationships and breaking up and life in general and I think I just saw that she stopped sharing her location with me finally because we just never did that um, but that definitely hurts uh, and it doesn't hurt as bad as it if I, as I like I saw it like five minutes ago or something and that hurt pretty bad and now I feel better about it uh, I guess talking through you guys and, and realizing this rounded square thing and I do have a plan to install some LED lights in that little blue square. Um, and uh, I guess that's it. Um, guys, buy shoes that you love <laughs> because it's awesome. It feels really good. And it's not that they're <laughs> that they're like the snappiest or coolest or whatever. It's just that I know Donald made them for me. <laughs> uh, And that's, like, I was kind of joking about the shoes part, um, but I just love that his DNA is in it and that he wears them too. There's just something about that that gets me. And, um, but really when, when he, God, it's crazy. Now I'm going to cry about Childish Gambino, but (laughs) when, um, when he makes music, it really feels like it's, for me. He made it for me. And he did. He doesn't know me, but he he knows that he made that for me. Uh, I know with, through his lyrics and because they touch me so deeply and um, it's crazy, man. And I, I feel love in details. So if someone doesn't do like a little thing for me that means a lot, that hurts 
and when they do like little stuff like just text me what's up or or like this is a stupid one but like cut the the cut the crust off of like my sandwich or whatever which I don't do anymore um like when I was a kid I did but uh but if if you if you know I don't like crust and you leave the crust on that leaves my heart crusty because (laughs) I'm like you know this you must not care enough to think about or know me in that way and and so cut off the crust please and do that for other people because I know other people like that Childish Gambino does he especially if you listen in earphones he puts little things in there that like are really small and intricate um like it feels like part of it and everything but like he puts it only in one ear and it's just like a cool sound um and like pop music doesn't have that it's like big drums big bass um you know fun upbeat something whatever um and you know generalizing but uh but that's what I like about Charles Gambino so much is it really feels like he cares about me and I know it's like the fans in general but it really like that's what Mr. Rogers did he felt he made you feel like he was talking to you um and when you're a kid it really felt like that and even now watching it it feels like he's talking to me and you know he wasn't because he died uh like shortly after I was born but um you know it's uh it's kind of special I don't know exactly how you do it um he said I try to do it with you guys even but I don't know if it's landing so the last thing is he even says uh I he tries to explain talking to just one person he says think about one person not not one person in specific but know that you're talking to one person and so I I try to do that uh, and I should be more intentional with it but that's uh, that's something that's really important and really hard and um, unfortunately I have to go but I think I also ran out of stuff to say (laughs) so that kid was kind of convenient and I love you guys. Please like and subscribe and, uh, you know, make friends in the comments. And um, thank you so much. Uh, I hope this made you think and keep in touch.